Let's start today, though, with what did and what didn't happen when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau met U.S. President Joe Biden this week. They did announce Biden will visit Canada in March, and they did come to an interim agreement on Nexus. But there wasn't anything on the safe third country agreement. Under the agreement, asylum seekers arriving by land at official crossings are turned away and handed back to American authorities. So they end up crossing the border in between those official crossings en masse. Marco Mendicino is the Federal Minister of Public Safety. Hi, Minister. Good to see you. Good to see you. Congratulations on the new show. Uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And I do appreciate you making the time. Uh, I want to ask you about Nexus, certainly in a moment, something that did make it on the agenda at this summit. But first, I want to ask you about something that didn't appear to make it. I combed the readout of the meeting between the Prime Minister and the President, and there was no mention of the Safe Third Country Agreement. Why not? Well, we've had a long-standing dialogue on the Safe Third Country Agreement, which, to be clear, uh, will allow us to both defend human rights when it comes to uh, those asylum seekers. Canada is a, a leader on the world stage when it comes to uh, providing safe asylum, uh, as well as protecting the integrity of our borders. Um, that process continues. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to be able to land it, and in the meantime, we'll continue to make historic investments, work with provincial and territorial partners, so that asylum seekers who have a basis on which to make those claims in Canada are able to do so, but do so in a safe and orderly way. But specifically, why was it not on the agenda here? I mean, there, there has been a large increase in the number of people crossing between illegal, between rather legal border points, between official border points, especially at Roxham Road in Quebec. Uh, we had seen indications from uh, U.S. Ambassador Hillman or Canadian Ambassador to U.S. Uh, Kirsten Hillman that it would be raised in these meetings. Why was it not? Why isn't it more of a priority? Well, to be clear, we've had an ongoing dialogue, and I have raised it with my counterpart consistently, as has the Prime Minister with the President. And as I said, we are cautiously optimistic that we are going to uh, land this in a successful way. And in the meantime, we'll keep on investing. By the way, let me just say, this was a very productive trip uh, at the North American Leaders Summit in Mexico. We confirmed that President Biden is coming, which is good. Uh, we deepened our cooperation on a wide variety of public safety priorities, including fighting gun crime, including on fighting uh, and dealing with the opioid crisis trade, and as you say, uh, coming to Nexus shortly. But this was a very productive outcome, and I think we're going to get there on the Safe Third Country Agreement as well. And I'm not attempting to dismiss that, and like I told you, I'm going to ask about Nexus. But the reason I'm asking about the Safe Third Country Agreement, and I want to be clear here, between January and November of 2022, the RCMP intercepted more than 34,000 asylum seekers crossing that border. That's compared to just over 4,000 for all of 2021. Less than two weeks ago, uh, a 44-year-old man was found dead. A migrant was found, found dead there. You have been promising alongside your government since 2018 to modernize that agreement with the United States. Why has there not been any progress? Well, first, uh, our hearts go out to the individual's family uh, who lost their life. And this just goes to show uh, the perils of, of, of migration. And migration is a challenge that is facing not only Canada, but countries uh, right around the world, which is why our cooperation is bedrocked on the Safe Third Country Agreement. Uh, to be clear, that agreement remains in place and it is working. You yourself acknowledge that the RCMP are doing the job of intercepting those who are coming into the country, which obviously underscores the integrity of our borders and the investments which are backstopped by the federal government. So we are going to land this. Uh, we have a good and robust and ongoing dialogue. It was uh, uh, raised uh, at NALS and we'll get there. And in the meantime, it's important that uh, we recognize that we have an immigration system that works that uh, fosters safe and orderly uh, flow, both when it comes to asylum seekers as well as economic immigrants as well. Minister, with great respect, how can you say that agreement is working when an individual, when a 44-year-old man died at the border, when 34,000 people in uh, 10 months, 10 or 11 months, decided that they would rather cross in between official points of entry and, and take that risk than going to official points of entry? How can you say that that agreement is working? Well, look, I, I don't want to diminish from that tragic situation. As I've already said, our hearts go out to his family. Um, what I'm talking about are the investments that we put in place to make sure that those individuals who are coming to seek asylum are processed, are screened, and that way they can make their claim in Canada or if they are not eligible to be returned to the United States. That is a system that has been in place now for a number of years. And what we are talking about now is modernizing and further strengthening that agreement, 
which we are continuing to, uh, to do through dialogue, which has been constructive throughout. And as I said, I am cautiously optimistic that we are going to be able to land it. When do you think you will land it? I hope as quickly as possible. Um, you know, what does there that have mean, been, uh, with respect? What does that mean? Well, I, listen, I, I certainly hope that it's uh, it's in the very short term. I don't want to be fastened to a particular timeline, but I hope it's soon. And based on the conversations that I've had with my counterpart, Secretary Mayorkas, who is the head of the Homeland Security, with whom I have a very strong rapport, I'm in contact with him virtually every week, uh, I'm cautious, uh, cautiously optimistic that we are going to get there. Okay, I do want to ask you about Nexus, because that is something that came out of the summit. Uh, your government was able to reach an interim agreement with the United States to, to put in place some changes to the program that allow for enrollment offices to open here in Canada. The, the stumbling block prior to this uh, for getting a more permanent deal was that the U.S. was insisting or asking for its border guards in Canadian enrollment offices to be immune from Canadian prosecution. I asked U.S. Ambassador David Cohen this week, is that still the U.S.'s red line? He said it is. Is it still yours? Well, let's take a step back, Bashi. Um, the Nexus program's vision is about accelerating border crossings for trusted travelers on both sides. And that is a vision that has been realized. Now we've got a roughly 1.7 or so million um, uh, users or cardholders. And for them, uh, this is a program that has been good. As you pointed out, um, we had a very successful outcome at NALS where we reached an agreement with the United States to increase the processing capacity of this program by 50%. So not just a smidge, but a rather substantial amount. And the outcome of that agreement will be that people will get their cards more quickly, we'll be able to reduce that backlog, and both countries will continue to enjoy the economic uh, benefits of this program, which numbers in the billions. With regards to the specific question that you asked, um, you're quite right uh, that powers and authorities and immunities are very much an important detail of this agreement, but we've reached a solution that works, which is to say that American officials can come and do their jobs on Canadian soil uh, by screening and by uh, ensuring that Nexus called hoarders meet the requirements without in any way diminishing from Canadian sovereignty, which, by the way, is important. So we've got a good solution. We've got a good outcome. And I think we're going to continue to see the benefits of this program going forward. But but it's not it's not really that simple. I mean, it's a clunky solution. That's actually exactly how the ambassador described it. Right. Like you you have to go to two separate places and then you have to be flying to the U.S. and you have to be at an airport to talk to a U.S. border guard in a pre clearance area. Are you saying to me that that is the only solution from Canadian, the Canadian point of view, because of that red line, like you maintain that red line, there will not be U.S. border guards who are immune from Canadian prosecution in Canadian enrollment offices? Well, the two-step process around the interviews, uh, by definition, will be driven by the, the, the flexible traveling choices by, by the cardholders. So let me just give it to you uh, in, a, in a pretty simple, straightforward hypothetical. You choose to fly the United States, uh, you go to the enrollment center where you have your booked, uh, pre-booked Canadian interview, and then you carry on to pre-clearance, which you'd have to do in any event, uh, tacking on a few additional questions, which will be done by uh, the American officials there. So, yes, it's an additional step, but the net outcome is that it will actually shrink the amount of time in which you get uh, your card processed, and then you get to use it. And that's ultimately, I think, the but goal uh, that both sides were committed to. Throughout my conversations with Secretary Mayorkas and the ambassador, there was a profound commitment to keep this co uh, program going because it's a net benefit uh, for both countries. It's driving the economy in okay. border communities. It's allowing people to get back and forth as quickly as possible. And we got that result. I just have a few seconds, but bluntly, you haven't answered the question. Is this the final solution for Canada? Well, look, we'll always keep options open to strengthen it. Uh, and that's part of the ongoing dialogue and the very good collaboration that we've got with the United States, not only on Nexus, but on public safety matters. Uh, but we've got a solution that works. And I think at the at the end of the day, it was win-win, a good outcome from Nulls. Okay, Minister, I'm going to leave it there. I'm out of time. Thank you for your time.